Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for the wonderful comments that you make. Thank you for being a supporter. And most of all, thank you for how nice you all are. Everybody that comes to my channel seems to be really nice people. So thank you. I have four items on the agenda today. <clears throat> the first one is entitled, They are finding people for using wood stoves. This is a Substack article by Peter Sweden. And uh, he reports that in South Gloucestershire, Gloss, I don't know how to pronounce that, Gloucestershire, in England, <coughs> they have now announced a 300 pound fine for heating your house with wood. The insanity that comes with the climate change hoax is over the top. It's, it leads to authoritarianism and totalitarianism and the loss of freedom. And this is clearly a loss of freedom if you can't even use your wood stove. But <clears throat> maybe one day people will wake up and realize climate change is not nearly as bad as they think it is. But until then, you got to put up with this stuff. The second, uh, the, the next two items that I have are both videos, and I was going to show them to you, but they're eight, eight minutes long. <coughs> Excuse me. They're eight minutes long, and I didn't want to take up that much of your time. So I'm just going to tell you briefly about them. And, of course, I'll put the links in the description so that you can watch them yourself if you want to. <coughs> the first one is titled, Final Warning, America's Last Chance Before Collapse. This is an eight-minute video by Victor Davis Hanson. He's being interviewed. If you don't know Victor Davis Hanson, he is a historian and uh, quite knowledgeable about history. And he comments frequently on what's going on in our country in, in America based on his knowledge of history and how he sees lots of parallels and those sorts of things. <clears throat> so... Again, this is an eight-minute video, and it's it's very interesting, the things that he has to say. So I thought I would give it to you, and you could watch it if you want. The next one is by Bill Maher, and it's New Rule, Quiet on the Set. And this is a fascinating video by Bill Maher where he talks about some of the things that are going on in what we call the woke arena. Um men playing in women's sports and those sorts of things. And he talks about how, uh, a, a lot about um, gender transitioning for children and how that's abuse. So I thought you might enjoy watching that as well. So again, it's an eight minute video. You'll have to set aside a little bit of time for that. And then finally, what I have is an article uh, called by Matt Taibbi called A Saturday Massacre in Congress. And the reason why I want to read this to you is because it is uh, stunning, the information that he provides. The, he's talking about uh, how Congress passed the FISA bill after saying that they would fix it and after saying they would fix... Um, this is, We're talking about the House now. After saying they would fix that and they would also fix uh, the open border, uh, but they ignored the border and they passed FISA anyway, despite all of the uh, protests from Americans. And so that's what he's talking about. I'm going to start reading. The first betrayal began with a lie. Heading into the weekend, it was widely reported that unless the Senate reauthorized Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which, among other things, allows the government to collect communications of Americans without a warrant, on April 19th, an April 19th deadline would expire. Our poor government would be forced to make due for whole days, if not longer, without warrantless spying authority. 
and then this next part is underlined, House to take up bill to re reauthorize crucial U.S. spy program as expiration date looms, as the AP put it. It was a typical headline. House Speaker Mike Johnson was one of many politicians who pushed the notion, saying on April 12th, we still have time on the clock to get FISA reauthorized by the 19th. This was all fake, in other words, a lie. The law was already extended. On April 5th of this year, Joe Biden's Department of Justice effectively granted itself, now think about that, the Department of Justice effectively granted itself a one-year extension of FISA, meaning the real deadline was April of 2025. Illinois Democrat Dick Durbin and others repeatedly announced the fact, even on the Senate floor, but the press did not report it. So much for getting information from the press. But what's even more startling and more troubling is that the, the White House no longer thinks it even needs legislative authority. They just went ahead and extended it arbitrarily, which is completely unconstitutional and absolutely illegal, and yet they did it anyway. But that too was fake, as the ACLU, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, and uh, over two dozen other groups wrote to congressional leaders at the end of last year, the government was already conducting surveillance pursuant to a one-year FISA court authorization from the previous year. In other words, the executive branch has been reauthorizing itself two years running and Congress has gone along, setting the precedent that spy agencies don't even need to ask permission to do anything at all. If you're an American and if you understand anything at all about our governmental system, this should infuriate you. It should absolutely infuriate you. The reason that we have separate branches of government is to put, put checks and balances in place to protect us against our government. And one of the checks on the executive branch is that they can't do anything without authorization from Congress. And yet here they are doing spying, illegal spying on American citizens without warrants, without even bothering to get the law passed. It doesn't get any worse than this. It just doesn't. It, it's, my God. I mean, I'm just, I'm so completely stunned. I can't even believe it. It's, it's just, <sighs> we have gone so far off the rails that I don't think uh, Victor Davis Hanson is wrong when he says we have one last chance to save this country. And frankly, Without intervention by God, without some kind of miracle, I don't think it's even possible. I think America as we know it and the freedoms that we supposedly enjoy, which we enjoy less and less of these days, will be gone forever if God doesn't intervene in some miraculous way. That's just the way I feel. I mean, look at it. They're not even bothering to get legislation passed to do what they want in the executive branch now. What, what? It's a dictatorship is what that is. That is a dictatorship. Plain and simple. But if I can't do anything else, I can at least pray for you. So I pray for you every day that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy that you'll live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm, even harm from our stinking rotten government. I pray you'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all, most of all, that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding We'll keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.